Hey data fans, Reed here. Today, I wanna to walk us through five tips and tricks that we can leverage in Power Query. This will be a great video for those of you who are just getting started in Power Query, or have only had a little bit of time to work with it, or maybe you're just wanting to learn a few tips and tricks to upgrade it. These will be five things that are very useful as far as the queries, the organization design, and maybe some things that you may or may not be familiar with as far as doing some development in the query editor. So hopefully you'll have some takeaways from this and at least a few things to take home and add to your tool belt. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI Desktop and get started. So inside of Power BI Desktop, I have opened the Power Query Editor. And the first thing that I wanna discuss is the folder organization that I use. Now I follow a methodology of ETL. So you might notice that my top folders have three sections, load to data model, staging tables, and data sources. It is the equivalent of extract, which is the data sources, transform, which are any staging queries needed, and then load to data model. Now, the reason that I have this top down is the fact that whenever you open the Power Query Editor, even if you've closed any of these folders, they will always open fully expanded. So I like to have the tables that I'm loading in the data model sitting at the top. Now to create a folder, or a group as they call them, if you right click on any query, you have an option to move to group, and move it to any existing ones. Otherwise, you can create a new group as well. Notice also that I can do subfolders. So in my data model, I have my fact tables, I have dimensional tables, and any of the disconnected tables, as an example, my measures folder listed here, those are all contained within this. So it goes a long way to help you organize and find the queries when you have them grouped by some type of category or other logical business requirement. In addition to folder organization, there is a way to also add some organization to your queries as well. So if you come to any of the queries here, you can right click on them and go to the properties menu and you'll find a hidden feature for a description in here. So if I was to type some notes into here and select OK, if you hover over that table, the notes will then pop up into here as a bit of documentation. Additionally, any of the applied steps that you have over here in the list if I was to come to the properties menu here, add some additional notes to the applied step, we will then get an icon to indicate that there is a note that's been added into here. It is added actually into the M code. If we look here at the top, you can technically edit it here, though I prefer the user interface for most people. And then you'll be able to sprinkle breadcrumb notes throughout your queries. So any step that requires some additional explanation or a table that requires additional explanation can go a long way to adding little breadcrumb notes throughout your query steps or queries to then help yourself in the future or any other developer who might take over the ownership of this model or report. Taking just a brief pause from the Power Query tips and tricks that I'm presenting, we do offer standardized trainings, three days of a standard curriculum with over 650 pages of material and an advanced training with many more resources as well in Power Query and DAX plus lots of slides, content, demos, and many things to enrich your experience. So check it out at our link below. Some other important configurations to turn on. If we come up to the View tab, I'd recommend to have the formula bar turned on because that will mean that anytime you have an applied step that you've added over on the right, you can at least observe what the M code or mashup code is that's being written. In addition, I like to have my column quality, distribution, and profile on. With these on, you then get metadata related to the column information in here. So you get both distinct and unique. Distinct means that for that first thousand rows that you can see here down at the bottom loaded in this query preview, if you distinct that column, that means there's 147 distinct values. Two unique means out of that first thousand rows, there were two rows where the product ID only existed on one row. But you also get the valid error and empty that gives you a breakdown of any information contained in this column, especially with conversion types, which is the error if you were to do a data type change and then whether or not they're empty and just if the data is valid or not. So nice little summarized information. Plus, if you click it, notice that we get the column statistics down there at the bottom. Now, in addition to this, there's a bit of a hidden feature. Notice that it says column profiling based on top thousand rows. If you click that, that's actually a button that will then let you fetch the column profiling against the entire data set. Now, as you might imagine, that could potentially take a long time because if your data set happens to be a fact table sitting on your database with 45 million rows, this might take a while to query. So just be careful of pressing that button, but otherwise it's a nice way to get stats against that column from your entire data set rather than just the first thousand row preview. 
So tip number three is the fact that these queries can be easily copied over to Power Pivot or even up to Data Flows in Power BI or even Fabric Data Flows Gen 2 in some of the other storage locations. To give you an example, we're going to go ahead and right click on Sales and I'm going to select Copy. Now this will also not only take this query but any dependencies it might have. So we're going to select Copy here and with a new Power BI desktop file open or an existing one, if I was to right click and select Paste, it will automatically paste both my data source referenced query and my sales query into here. Let's go ahead and see this happen in Excel too. So in Excel, under the data, queries and connections, if I was to open that up, let the model load. Once again, I can come over, paste. It will paste it right into there as well, into Power Pivot. And then last but not least, let's look at the Power BI service. And now inside of Power Query Online, I could go ahead and do Control V to paste these in. And this will take any queries that I've copied over and paste it right into here. Granted, what I will need to do is actually sign in again just to be able to connect to this online source. But you can see that it took this original copied query, some other ones that I copied that had an Azure database source and pasted them right into the query editor inside of Fabric. This can be done in the standard data flows. Similarly, if we were to close out of this, come up to Create, Go down into Microsoft Fabric. Anytime you see something like Data Flows Gen 2 in here, that is also using Power Query Online where those queries can be copied as well. So easily they can be developed in any one of these and copied and pasted to the other ones as long as they share the same connectors. Tip number four is going to be leveraging referenced queries or parameters to be able to easily update data sources. Now, if you're using a local source, having something like a data source single query down here where this query is connecting to that file location and then this is automatically feeding the data in both to sales, product, company, and color. So in theory, if this file location ever changes, if I update this query here, it will update the remaining queries connected to it. That is accessed via creating a new query by right clicking and selecting reference, which will create a new query based off of this one as its source. We can also see the query dependencies where that can be observed. If we make this just a little bit bigger, increase that. There is my single connection from the file source going into my data source query, feeding all of these. Plus notes, as you can observe, also show up here. So that's one way to do it with local files. Also with an Azure string, if we put in a parameter string in here, then if we were to go to new source, get data from SQL as an example, we can then come to parameters and select that here. Those parameters can be managed up in the Manage Parameters section in here, where we can create a new one, type in the string, and then the added benefit is also deployment pipelines can leverage these between dev, test, and prod, where each single deployment pipeline that is writing to different workspaces allows you to modify this string to change potentially from different servers or different databases if you have those as part of your dev, test, and prod environment. So two ways to reduce the number of times you have to edit queries because you edit it here, and then any dependent queries will automatically inherit those changes. And last but not least, number five for tip and trick is going to be leveraging query folding. Now, this is something that can go very deep into the topic, but generally speaking, it's a question on whether or not the server does the data transformation and processing, or does Power BI do that locally with the CPU and memory to have to crunch and mash up through that information. So this sales order detail table, as an example, if we come over to here, we can see that we've filtered, removed some columns, merged with another table from the same database. If you right click, you can see that there is a view native query button because I'm connecting to SQL that is inheriting and automatically creating a SQL view that is being handed to the server. So that is query folding that is happening. Like I said, there's a lot of considerations and many discussions around this, but at a basic level, if you can see the view native query when connecting to a relational data source, and again, relational implies that it has some type of structured language on top of it. So SQL or Snowflake or anything else that has a query language. Blob, storage, flat files, web sources generally do not work with this. But if you can see that, most of the time that indicates you have query folding happening. There are ex some exceptions to this, but that's generally the rule of thumb when it comes to that. Now, it's kind of like a can being kicked down the road. If you were to add a certain step, some more advanced transformations or other things such as indexes or anything that requires a bit more work, it will break the folding. If we come after it, we notice that you need a query is disabled. So there's a degree of just shuffling these steps around. So the index I've observed breaks it. So that should be at the end. So that means that at least up until this point, the query folding is happening. So as far down your applied step list as you can fold before you break it, will just make your query run faster. Like I said, it does not have to complete the race to get all the way to the end of your applied steps. 
but as many applied steps as you can apply into query folding before you break it will go a long way to ensuring that you'll have much faster queries. So just as an observation, each time you add a step, right click and double check that view native query is working and it will continue to move forward. Now, the goal of this introduction video was just to provide you some generalized tips and tricks. Each one of these topics, I could have easily spent five, 10, 30 minutes more on going deeper dives with them, but I just wanted to give you some takeaways of some items and ideas, tools, practices to take away, to put into your tool belt to enhance your Power Query experience. So hopefully you found some good uses with some of these and a few takeaways to help you enhance your Power Query development. If you like the video, don't forget to drop a comment down below or any suggestions, other ideas you might have as part of your favorite top fives. I would love to hear them. Otherwise, check out some of my related content here in the upper left. And otherwise, don't forget to like, comment, or share. This video helps my channel grow. And otherwise, I will see you all in my next video.